Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. You're trapped inside a car and you need to get out before you die of dehydration, but for that, you'll have to face a monstrous dog that craves meat and that's been contaminated by rabies. Today we're going to recap the story based on one of Stephen King's works, called Cujo, from 1983. Cujo is a Saint Bernard dog that, despite being scary for its size, is extremely docile and playful. The dog lives on a large farm, located in Maine. His family is very poor, with Joe being the only one to support the house with his work as a mechanic, which is carried out in the garage of the farm itself. One morning, Cujo is running freely through the farm's fields when he spots a rabbit and starts chasing it, starting what for him should just be a fun hunting game. Afraid of being caught by the dog, the little rabbit runs towards its den to hide. Unable to get through the hole, Cujo starts barking as he watches his target go deeper and deeper into the hole. But unfortunately for the dog and everyone around him, the den was infested with bats that are woken up by the dog's barking. The bats become extremely agitated and try to get out of but Cujo's head is covering the only exit. At that moment, one of the bats ends up biting the animal's snout, which starts crying in pain and pulls its head out of the hole. A few kilometers away at the Trenton residence we meet Tad, a four-year-old boy who is terrified of the monsters in his closet, only able to sleep after his father looks around every corner of the room expelling such monsters. Tad's family consists of Donna, a loving mother who is responsible for taking care of the house, and Vic, a great father who works at an advertising agency. The next day, during the family's breakfast, furniture restorer Steve arrives at the house. As they talk, a commercial for a successful cereal that was created by Vic begins to play on television, and after finishing his meal, he leaves for work. Later that same day, we learn that while Tad was at school and Vic was working, Donna had a secret affair with Steve, who in addition to being a restorer is also a neighbor of the family. Not suspecting what was happening between his wife and his neighbor, Vic goes to a mechanic shop to check the front wheel of his vehicle, which was making an unusual noise. As he was in a hurry to go to work, and the mechanic was busy with other cars, Vic ends up accepting the suggestion of a postman who was passing by the place to go to another workshop that belonged to Joe, just outside the city. Because it's a bit far, Vic ends up going to work with the car in that condition, broken down, and leaves to go to the repair shop that was recommended the next day, with his wife and son. As soon as they arrive, Tad falls in love with Cujo who, even when injured, proves to be a very docile dog and loves children. Overnight, seeing her husband's dedication to being a good father, Donna begins to regret her affair with Steve. The next morning, there's a controversy on the news about how healthy the cereal in the commercial made by Vic and his agency was. With his job at risk, Vic is practically forced to go to an emergency meeting next week in another state to devise a new marketing campaign and clear up the alleged misunderstanding. Meanwhile, feeling guilty about the affair, Donna goes to Steve's house to break up the relationship. Taken by rage, the man reacts in a very childish way and ends up not accepting the end of the affair so well. After putting an end to her relationship with the neighbor, the woman goes to Tad's school to pick him up and take him home. Halfway through, her car starts to show signs that it won't work for a long time. Already on the farm, Cujo is getting increasingly clear signs that something is not right. But none of his family pays much attention, as they are busier thinking about how to spend the $5,000 they won in the lottery. Joe's wife decides to go with her son to spend a week of vacation at her sister's house. The mechanic calls his neighbor Gary to spend the week in Boston. With everyone deciding to travel, you can already see where this is heading. Donna is alone cleaning the house when Steve arrives to bring a piece of furniture and enters the residence uninvited. The man is not over the end of the relationship and is acting in a way that is not mature at all. He even got violent, and tried to do horrible things to her. Nearby, Vic goes to Tad's school to pick him up and arrives home in time to see the end of the argument between his wife and the neighbor. As he had suspected for some time, the husband decides to ask about the affair and is disappointed to find out that Donna was really cheating on him. Even with the betrayal, the man decides to continue with the relationship, at least while he thinks about what to do. Before going on the trip, Vic still tries to fix Donna's car on his own, but fails, as he doesn't have the proper tools. He tells the woman to take the vehicle to Joe's shop in the next few days so he can have it repaired. When her husband is about to leave for the trip, Donna apologizes for the affair and says that everything between her and Steve was over. Even though he believes her, Vic says he still doesn't know what he's going to do and then leaves for his meeting in New York. Out of town, Gary is working at his junkyard. When Cujo, already infected, finds the man and taken by the rabies virus, he attacks him fiercely, he even tries to run to his house and takes the shotgun to kill the dog, but he doesn't have time for anything. Because while he is taking the projectiles from the ammo box to put in the weapon, the dog manages to break the door and jumps on top of the man, even ripping his meat, while he was still alive. At the same time, 
Joe helps his wife and son pack their bags, and after they leave, the mechanic pays his friend a visit, so they also start preparing for their trip. Arriving at Gary's junkyard, Joe finds his friend already dead and while calling the emergency services, he is also attacked by Cujo, who this time brutally kills his own owner. On the road that leads out of town, Donna and Tad take the car that can barely move to the garage, which is now completely empty. Therefore, the only company the mother and child have is Cujo, already completely beside himself because of his illness. Arriving at the farm, Donna starts calling for someone, while the child tries to take his seatbelt off, as it got stuck. With no response, the woman then decides to help her son loosen up so they can walk around the farm looking for someone. But before the boy gets free, Cujo jumps out the window with Joe's blood and secretions all over his body, and barks fiercely as he tries to get into the car. Afraid of the dog hurting Tad, Donna tries her best to close the car window and even though it looks like the glass is going to break, she manages to do it. But Cujo was pretty smart. Realizing that the woman left the door on the other side open when she went out to try to call someone, the animal immediately runs there with the intention of getting into the car to catch them, but Donna managed to close it before the dog could reach them. After a few more seconds of trying to get in, Cujo temporarily gives up, which gives her a little time to try to start the car and have a way to escape. But the car just won't start. A few hours later, the woman tries again to start the vehicle and this time, she succeeds. But the damn thing just hangs up after walking a few meters, leaving Donna totally in disbelief with the possibility of getting out of there on her own. As night falls, Vic calls his house trying to talk to his wife and, when he is not answered, he becomes suspicious, but decides to let it go and goes to dinner. At the same time, Tad really need to use a bathroom, so, they are forced to open the door so the boy can relieve himself. At this point, Joe's home phone also starts ringing, driving Cujo totally insane to the point where he starts attacking the house. Even with the dog's madness, this makes Donna hopeful, as she now knows that a few meters away there is a way for her to ask for help, but Cujo's still on her way. Then the woman lies down to sleep while she thinks of a way to get rid of the animal. The next morning, as soon as he wakes up, Vic calls his house again and once again no one answers. With another extremely hot day starting and water running low, Donna knows she will have to get out of the car and go to Joe's house any moment or they will die of dehydration. Looking around for things that could help her to defeat Cujo, the woman notices that a few feet from her car is a baseball bat that would be perfect for the job. Before leaving the only safe place, she tries once more to start the vehicle which again shows no sign of life, this time even the horn stopped working, indicating the lack of charge in the battery. In the middle of the afternoon, Joe's phone starts ringing again, but this time instead of attacking the house, the dog simply starts charging at the car, headbutting its door several times and even breaking the handle off the car. Once again, the attack ends as soon as the phone stops ringing. From New York, Vic keeps trying to make calls to his residence, but realizing that no one will answer, he decides to abandon all the new advertising project they were working on and returns home believing that his wife took advantage of these days to spend with Steve. At Joe's farm, Donna realizes that Tad is in very bad shape due to dehydration, and determined to save him, she tries to open the door to get out of the car, but because of the animal's attempts to destroy the car, the door simply get loose at the moment she opens it. As soon as she gets out of the vehicle, she starts looking around for the dog, and when she lies down to check for something under the car, Cujo appears behind her and starts attacking her. Even taking a few bites and having her clothes almost completely torn, the woman manages to run into the vehicle and tries to close the door. But the demon dog is faster and enters almost next to her and starts biting her, leaving her son totally in shock. After a few desperate seconds of wrestling with the creature, Donna manages to push it out and put the door back in place, finally getting to safety. After a few hours, Cujo lies down on the hood to sleep, causing the woman to spend the entire night seeing the huge bloody dog face to face. With the sunrise starting another day of unbearable heat, Donna wakes up Tad having a seizure from the heat and dehydration. As she goes through this desperate situation like that, Steve breaks into the Trenton house and simply destroys everything, even the family photos is revenge for the end of the relationship. As soon as the lover leaves, Vic returns to his home to find it utterly destroyed. Not understanding what happened, he calls the police to report vandalism and talk about his wife's disappearance. When the officers arrive at the scene, they ask where the woman could have taken the car and he says that it would probably be in the garage. As it would be the only place they have to look at first, one of the police officers starts heading towards Joe's farm. Arriving at the place, the sheriff sees Donna's car parked in the middle of the farm, but he can't see the two inside, as they were sleeping with the bench tilted. Of course, in every good classic horror movie, the policeman will serve to die, and this case is no different. When the man takes out his radio to report that he has found the vehicle, 
Kujo jumps on top of the officer causing his gun to fall to the ground. The policeman even manages to get rid of the animal and runs to the barn, but is caught again and killed a few seconds later. Donna wakes up only to see the police officer who was her hope of being saved being torn apart by the dog. At the Trenton residence, the detective tells Vic that they managed to find Steve, who confessed to vandalizing the house, but that his wife and son were not with him. The man also says they haven't heard from the police officer who went to Joe's farm, causing Vic to suspect something is wrong and leave immediately. As the afternoon progresses, Donna notices that Tad is passed out, and upon checking his vitals she realizes that the boy is about to die of dehydration, desperate on the possibility of losing her son. The injured woman gets out of the car and runs towards the house to use the phone, but Cujo is in her way. Determined to save Tad, Donna runs to the baseball bat she had seen earlier, and uses it to fight the animal, which still doesn't give up and advances towards her. As it was kill or be killed, the woman hits the demonic dog with her bat, which breaks forming a kind of wooden stake. As she backs away in fear, the woman stumbles and the dog takes the chance to lunge at Donna, but has its chest pierced by the stake and instantly blacks out. In order to confirm the death of the animal, the brave mother takes the policeman's gun, but ends up giving up on the mercy shot. Was it a good choice? Well, with one less problem to face, the woman goes to her car and seeing that she won't be able to open the doors of the vehicle, because she didn't have the handle, she breaks the rear window with her gun and takes Tad on her lap to take him out of the sun and hydrate him. As soon as she enters Joe's residence, Donna revives the boy who wakes up coughing a lot, but has barely had time to celebrate. Cujo is standing like a zombie, and keeps trying to get them. He walks through the window with blood in his eyes. Exhausted from that situation and afraid of being devoured along with her son, the woman shoots the animal right in the head, finally finishing him. Vic arrives at the scene, but he already sees his wife leaving the house victorious with Tad on her lap. Unfortunately, that was the end for Cujo. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.